Hello, this is John from kvalveprogramming.com. This is part four of the Java for Complete Beginners tutorial um, from Kvalve Programming. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at loops. I'm using the Eclipse IDE as usual. And I'm going to go to New Java Project. And I'm going to type a name for the project, Tutorial 4. Next and Finish. And I'll right click the project folder, create a new class as usual. I'll call this application and I'll click finish. And uh, to create a main method, I'm going to type main, control space, hit return. And here we've got some bad formatting, not enough indent here. So to deal with that, I'm just going to select it and go control, shift and F. And now it's perfectly formatted. Okay, so in the, in the first tutorial, we saw the Boolean type, which can be used to store a true or a false value. Um, so I could create a Boolean, for example. Um, what should I call it? Well, I'll call it loop for reasons that you'll see later. And I could set that to um, a value like true, for example, true. And I could output this, sys out, control space, loop. Run the program. And we've got true out here. Now, what I can also do is set it equal to um, something like four less than five. So this is a less than sign. And you can see there's um, the less than sign has a kind of small end here and it kind of has a big end here and the smaller number goes at the small end and the big one at the big end and if you have the numbers the right way around this whole expression will return true now 4 is less than 5 so if I run this program again we've got true or of course if I said um, 6 greater than 1 which is clearly not true this is a greater than sign um, I, um, oh, of course, six is greater than one. What am I talking about? If I say six less than one, I get false. Now, I can also use a variable in, in here. I can say, for example, int um, value equals, let's say, 10. And then I can say boolean loop equals... Um, value less than 20. So value is equal to 10 and value is less than 20 so loop is set to true. Um, now we can use this to control a loop. Um, to create a loop in Java I could type while and then in here I need some condition and the condition is what determines when the loop stops or rather I should say it determines when the loop will run because as long as the condition that I type in here is true the loop will run so if I say value less than 10 and let's set value equal to 0 and I put brackets in here I can put some code in here um, which will run as long as this condition is true. And clearly this condition is always going to be true. Value will always be less than 10. So if I run this program, it's just an infinite loop. It never stops. Um, but what I can do to make this more interesting is here I can say value equals value plus 1. What's happening is um, so to start with value equals zero and then this condition's true so the loop starts to execute um, we output some text and then we say whatever value is add one to it and then store it back in value itself so value is going to increase zero one two three four five and eventually it will be equal to ten and when it's equal to ten this condition is no longer true and the loop stops. Um, so if I run this, you can see that we've got 
10 of those. And just to make it clearer, I can, I'll add a space after hello, and then I'll output the value. I'll concatenate the value as a string to this string. And if I run that, you see we've got hello 0 to 9. So in total there's 10, um, there's 10 uh, hello is outputted 10 times. So this, the structure of this is we've got um, here, this is, the, this is a keyword, while, and this is a condition which is in round brackets after the keyword. And then after that you've got a pair of curly brackets and your code that you want to execute repeatedly goes in here. And of course you need some something in here that will gradually count up the loop and eventually make this condition false. The best way to learn this is not to ponder over it too long or too much, but just to try typing it out yourself. Try to create loops, see if you can start them and stop them, see if you can print stuff out from them, and pretty soon you'll be a dab hand at it. That's all for this time. Um, next time we're going to look at for loops, which are a little bit more complicated but extremely useful. And you can find more information and tutorials on caverprogramming.com. I hope you'll join me again for the next tutorial. And until then, happy coding! Thank you.